Countdown Till Christmas is brought to you by Princess Grams. Personalized, magical, musical greetings from your favorite characters. Learn more and send one at princessgrams.com. Hello again. Oh, I'm so glad you're back today. I'm excited to decorate, sing, and share another story with you, and I hope you're excited for that too. Well, you know you're just in time to help me put the next ornament on our Christmas tree from our Advent calendar. So should we find out what it is? December 20th, that's today already. Oh, wow. It's this beautiful, sparkly, colorful piñata. Isn't that pretty? And you know, piñatas are common in Mexico, but the tradition has an interesting history. It came to Mexico from Spain, but merged with similar traditions of the Mayans and Aztecs. And the Spanish got their piñatas from Italy, which got them from China. Piñatas have really been all over the world. <laughs> well, let's put our piñata on the tree. Let's see. How about... Here. Oh, that looks pretty. Of course, piñatas come in all kinds of shapes and colors. But ours is this cute little donkey, like the one that Mary rode to Bethlehem. And one Christmas tradition that's been important in Mexico for more than 400 years are the posada processions, where children carry painted clay figures of Joseph along with Mary on a donkey. Posada means lodging or inn in Spanish. The posadas happen for nine days from December 16th through 24th. Children perform the posadas by carrying these figures and candles from house to house in their neighborhood. At each home, they sing a song about Mary and Joseph asking for a place to stay. But each time they're told there's no room until finally, after nine posadas, they are welcomed inside. They offer prayers of thanks and then they have a party. There are games at the parties and sometimes even a piñata. Well, since people speak Spanish in Mexico, they use the same phrase that we learned a few days ago, December 5th in Argentina, and that is Feliz Navidad. Why don't you try that with me? Feliz, Feliz Navidad, Navidad, Feliz Navidad. Great job. Well, in some Mexican families, children receive their gifts on January 6th, or Epiphany, and they come from the Magi, or the Three Kings. And if you remember, Epiphany is the day that some people celebrate when the three wise men gave their gifts to the baby Jesus after following the Christmas star. Well, thinking about children in Mexico singing in the posadas makes me want to sing again. <laughs> And would you like to learn the next part of the song that we started yesterday, up on the housetop? Well, why don't we sing the first part together first, and then we'll learn the second part. So as a reminder, the lyrics are, Up on the housetop, the reindeer paws. Out jumps good old Santa Claus. Down through the chimney with lots of toys. All for the little one's Christmas joys. So are you ready to try that? Great. Up on the housetop the reindeer paws Out jumps good old Santa Claus Down through the chimney with lots of toys All for the little one's Christmas joys And let's keep going with the second part. It goes like this. Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Up on the housetop, click, 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 down through the chimney with old Saint Nick. So again, those lyrics to the second part are ho, 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 
<laughs> and for that part, you get to do your best Santa Claus laugh. Okay, so ho, 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 who wouldn't go? And we sing that two times. And then we have up on the housetop, click, click, click. And I think those clicks are the reindeer's hooves on the roof. What do you think? <laughs> Down through the chimney with old Saint Nick. So all together, that's ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Up on the housetop, click, click, click. Down through the chimney with old Saint Nick. Well, are you ready to try singing that? How about we do it two times together, okay? <laughs> Let's start there. Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Up on the housetop, click, Click, down through the chimney with old Saint Nick. One more time. Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Up on the housetop, click, click, click. Down through the chimney with old Saint Nick. <laughs> Great job. That was a lot of fun for me, and I hope it was for you too. Well, tomorrow we'll sing the whole song, but right now... It's time for our story of the day. And today we are finishing the story we've been reading for the past two days called Little Gretchen and the Wooden Shoe by Elizabeth Harrison. And if you've missed any of that, you can go back and watch the past two days videos, okay? That's from December 18th and 19th. But as a reminder, we met little Gretchen, who's a very sweet and happy child and her granny, and they live in a small little cottage at the edge of the forest, about a half a mile from their town, and they're very poor, and Gretchen has seen that some other children will be getting toys and nice things for Christmas, and she's hopeful that maybe she'll have something too, but granny has told her that they're too poor to be able to have Christmas toys, but Gretchen still believes that somehow she will have something for Christmas. And so last night was Christmas Eve, and she left out a wooden shoe that's one of Granny's shoes. She left it in the windowsill, hoping that the Christmas angels might fill it with something. And she told Granny she was going to do this, but Granny said, You are only getting ready for a disappointment. Tomorrow there will be nothing whatever in the shoe. I can tell you that now. But little Gretchen would not listen. She only shook her head and cried out, Oh, Granny, you don't talk enough to the stars. With this, she seized the shoe and, opening the door, hurried out to place it on the windowsill. It was very dark without, and something soft and cold seemed to gently kiss her hair and face. Gretchen knew by this that it was snowing, and she looked up at the sky anxious to see if the stars were in sight, but a strong wind was tumbling the dark, heavy snow clouds about and had shut away all else. Never mind, said Gretchen softly to herself. The stars are up there, even if I can't see them, and the Christmas angels do not mind snowstorms. Just then, a rough wind went sweeping by the little girl whispering something to her, which she could not understand. And then it made a sudden rush up to the snow clouds and parted them so that the deep, mysterious sky appeared beyond. And shining down out of the midst of it was Gretchen's favorite star. Ah, oh, little star, little star, said the child, laughing aloud. I knew you were there, though I couldn't see you. Will you whisper to the Christmas angels as they come by that little Gretchen wants so very much to have a Christmas gift tomorrow morning, if they have one to spare, and that she has put one of Granny's shoes upon the windowsill, ready for it? A moment more, and the little girl, standing on tiptoe, had reached the windowsill and placed the shoe upon it and was back again inside the house, beside Granny and the warm fire. The two went quietly to bed, and that night, as little Gretchen knelt to pray to the Heavenly Father, she thanked him for having sent the Christ child into the world 
to teach all mankind how to be loving and unselfish. And in a few moments, she was quietly sleeping, dreaming of the Christmas angels. The next morning, very early, even before the sun was up, little Gretchen was awakened by the sound of sweet music coming from the village. She listened for a moment, and then she knew that the choir boys were singing the Christmas carols in the open air of the village street. She sprang up out of bed and began to dress herself as quickly as possible, singing as she dressed. While Granny was slowly putting on her clothes, little Gretchen, having finished dressing herself, unfastened the door and hurried out to see what the Christmas angels had left in the old wooden shoe. The white snow covered everything. Trees, stumps, roads, and pastures, until the whole world looked like fairyland. Gretchen climbed up on a large stone, which was beneath the window, and carefully lifted down the wooden shoe. The snow tumbled off of it in a shower over the little girl's hands, but she did not heed that. She ran hurriedly back into the house, putting her hand into the toe of the shoe as she ran. Oh, Granny! Oh, Granny! she exclaimed. You didn't believe the Christmas angels would think about us. But see, they have! They have! Here is a dear little bird nestled down in the toe of your shoe. Oh, isn't he beautiful? Granny came forward and looked at what the child was holding lovingly in her hand. There she saw a tiny chickadee, whose wing was evidently broken by the rough and boisterous winds of the night before, and who had taken shelter in the safe, dry toe of the old wooden shoe. She gently took the little bird out of Gretchen's hands and skillfully bound his broken wing to his side so that he need not hurt himself by trying to fly with it. Then she showed Gretchen how to make a nice warm nest for the little stranger close beside the fire. And when their breakfast was ready, she let Gretchen feed the little bird with a few moist crumbs. Later in the day, Gretchen carried the fresh green boughs to the old sick man by the mill, and on her way home, stopped to see and enjoy the Christmas toys of some other children whom she knew, never once wishing that they were hers. When she reached home, she found that the little bird had gone to sleep. Soon, however, he opened his eyes and stretched his head up, saying just as plain as a bird could say, Now, my friends, I want you to give me something more to eat. Gretchen gladly fed him, and then, holding him in her lap, she softly and gently stroked his gray feathers until the little creature seemed to lose all fear of her. That evening, Granny taught her a Christmas hymn and told her another beautiful Christmas story. Then, Gretchen made up a funny little story to tell the birdie. He winked his eyes and turned his head from side to side in such a droll fashion that Gretchen laughed until the tears came. As Granny and she got ready for bed that night, Gretchen put her arms softly around Granny's neck and whispered, What a beautiful Christmas we have had today, Granny. Is there anything in the world more lovely than Christmas? Nay, child, nay, said Granny, not to such a loving heart as yours. Why don't we end our time together today with another Christmas carol? And today's is called Good Christian Friends Rejoice. And if you know it, please sing along. 
Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Thank you again for coming by to see me today. I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow and until I see you again. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with a friend. That not only encourages me, it also makes a big difference to my channel and helps others find videos they would enjoy too. Wishing you a joyful season and a happy day. I'll see you tomorrow.